Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to talk about element number 95, americium. You might think that a synthetic radioactive element that follows plutonium, element number 94, and has a significantly shorter half-life would be some kind of super bomb material, available only to scientists in secret laboratories. Perhaps a mad scientist is studying americium in a lair somewhere, but if you want some for yourself, you can simply walk into any neighborhood hardware store, supermarket, or Walmart and buy some no questions asked. The reason is not that americium is fundamentally less dangerous than the elements around it. In fact, the commonly available isotope americium-241 is significantly more radioactive than weapons-grade plutonium, and at least as toxic. No, the difference is simply that there is a useful application for americium that requires only a very tiny amount, and for which a company was prepared to go through the effort required to carve out and get a regulatory exception. Should we worry about radioactive button sources in every home? Smoke detectors of this type are significantly faster than others in responding to common fires, and have no doubt saved many lives. And as with the polonium and anti-static brushes, the americium in smoke detector buttons is well protected by a layer of gold, element number 79. Here's element number 79. This shiny portion of the button right here is the gold. If you're interested in learning about the element gold, I'll leave a link in the description below. While not considered a good idea, people have swallowed such buttons with no ill effects. The gold being a noble metal withstands attack by stomach acid and allows the button to emerge intact and unscathed. Rejecting smoke detectors because of their americium would be very foolish. The ubiquitous ionization smoke detector is available in any hardware store or grocery store for a few dollars and has saved many thousands of lives. Here we have the circuit board inside an ionization smoke detector. The vented metal can that normally encloses the ionization chamber has been removed so you can see the americium button in place inside. Here we have the radioactive americium button from inside a common ionization type smoke detector. Underneath the gold foil is 0.9 microcuries of americium 241. The death rate per 1000 reported home fires was more than twice as high in homes that did not have any working smoke alarms compared to the rate in homes with working smoke alarms. 12.3 deaths versus 5.7 deaths per 1000 fires, according to mysmokealarm.org. All that with less than one one millionth of a gram of americium. With americium, we reach the end of the line for element collectors. It is the very last element that is legal to own without expensive special licenses, which in general are granted only if you can demonstrate a legitimate reason for needing a given element. Americium also starts a trend that continues all the way to the last of the currently named elements, and most likely will apply to all those yet to be named. The elements from americium on have been named for places or people. Those honored so far have all been scientists of the highest order, starting with Marie and Marie Curie. If you're interested in learning about the element curium, I'll leave a link in the description below. I previously made a video on the element curium, element number 96, and the element gold, element 79. Americium, element number 95 the actinoid elements. Its symbol is AM, its atomic number is 95, its atomic weight is 243.06, its color is silver white, its standard state is solid at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, its classification is metallic. Its color is silver white, its standard state is solid at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, its classification is metallic. I'm an all-American hero, Playing a key role in smoke alarms, I've saved countless people's lives from fire. I'm the only dangerous radioactive element allowed in your home. I had to get a special permit for it. Still, it takes less than a millionth of a gram to do the job. Sitting beneath your opium on the periodic table, I'm named after America. Americium's density is 12 grams per centimeters cubed. Its melting point is 1,176 degrees Celsius or 2,149 degrees Fahrenheit. Its boiling point is 2,607 degrees Celsius or 4,725 degrees Fahrenheit. Its symbol is AM. Its date of discovery was in 1789. Here we have a map of 1789. Americium, element number 95. Scientists decided to name americium after North America, where it was first made. 
Smoke detectors use tiny amounts of this element as its radioactivity allows an electric current to pass through the air between two sensors in the device. Any smoke blocking the current causes the detector to sound an alarm. Its atomic mass is 243, its state is a solid, its discovery was in 1944 by a team led by Glenn T. Seaborg. Since we are talking about smoke detectors, smoke detector, electrodes, detection chamber, radioactive source, alarm, and the battery. Smoke detectors can sense the small particles of smoke that rise from a smoldering object and raise the alarm before fire breaks out. They work in two ways. Optical detectors use a light beam and light sensor that react to anything obscuring the beam. Ionization detectors of the kind shown here are electrical sensors that can detect smaller particles than their optical equivalents. The ionization smoke detector contains a chamber in which a low electric current flows through the air. Smoke particles entering the chamber increase its electrical resistance so that less current flows. A microchip responds to the drop in current and a failing battery by switching on an alarm. Ionization rays. Rays from the radioactive source ionize the atoms in the air of the detection chamber, giving them positive and negative electric charges. The charged atoms or ions carry an electric current between the charged electrodes. Smoke particles entering the chamber attract the ions and reduce the current. Here we have the electrode, the ions, and the other electrode, and the smoke attracts the ions. Americium, element number 95. Another artificially produced radioactive actinide, americium was first synthesized in the US in 1944. This element is only produced in nuclear reactors. It also emits rays that can be used to monitor the thickness of metal sheets in industry. Detecting smoke. Americium's main commercial use is in detectors and smoke alarms. The safe radiation given off by americium allows an electrical current to flow, but if smoke enters the detector, its particles absorb the radiation. The circuit is broken and an alarm sounds. Once the smoke clears, the current flows again and the alarm turns off. Let's continue with the element americium. Americium is commonly used in smoke alarms, but has few other uses. It has the potential to be used in spacecraft batteries in the future. Currently plutonium is used, but availability is poor, so alternatives are being considered. It is of interest as part of the decay sequence that occurs in nuclear power production. So again, americium, a typical smoke detector, contains about 0.29 micrograms of americium dioxide as a radiation source. The radiation source is alpha radiation. Americium-241 is primarily an alpha emitter, but also emits some gamma rays. It poses a more significant risk if ingested, swallowed, or inhaled. Americium, like various other radioactive elements, could be used as an alternative to plutonium to power spacecraft in the future. The announcement of americium's discovery was made on a children's radio show by Glenn Seaborg. Glenn Theodore Seaborg was an American chemist whose involvement in the synthesis, discovery, and investigation of 10 transuranium elements earned him a share of the 1951 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, according to Wikipedia. He discovered elements plutonium, americium, curium, californium, einsteinium, nobelium, berkelium, mendelevium, and fermium. Americium, the metal is silvery white and tarnishes slowly in dry air at room temperature. The isotope americium-241 is the most important because of its availability. This isotope is produced by multiple neutron capture in nuclear reactors and has been isolated in kilogram amounts from plutonium and other actinoids in used nuclear fuels. Americium-241 has been used industrially in fluid density gauges, thickness gauges, aircraft fuel gauges, and distance sensing devices, all of which use its gamma radiation. Americium is primarily an alpha emitter, but it emits some gamma rays. How do density gauges work? The device determines the density of material by counting the number of photons emitted by a radioactive source, cesium-137, or in this case, americium, that are read by the detector tubes in the gauge base. A 60-second time interval is typically used for the counting period, according to Wikipedia. What are thickness gauges? A thickness gauge is useful for many industries, but is most commonly used in engineering and manufacturing to help ensure material thickness complies with industrial standards and regulations. According to olympusims.com, how do aircraft fuel gauges work, and what is aircraft fuel gauge? Through use of the gear mechanism, the up-down movement of the rod is converted into circular movement, which is passed to a rod or cable that is attached to the fuel gauge via a drive magnet. So finally, the up-down movement of the flow in the fuel tank is converted into full, empty on the fuel gauge. 
according to mynewsdesk.com. What is an aircraft fuel gauge? In automotive and aerospace engineering, a fuel gauge is an instrument used to indicate the amount of fuel in a fuel tank. In electrical engineering, the term is used for ICs determining the current state of charge of accumulators, according to Wikipedia. And again, the reason I mention these is because americium is used for those gauges and devices, all of which use americium's gamma radiation. The isotope's alpha particle emission is exploited in smoke detectors. All isotopes of americium are radioactive. The stabilist isotope, americium-243, has proved more convenient for chemical investigations because of its longer half-life of 7,370 years compared with 433 years for americium-241, seen here, in comparison. Americium, AM, synthetic chemical element, atomic number 95 of the actinoid series of the periodic table. Unknown in nature, americium, as the isotope americium-241, previously mentioned, was artificially produced from plutonium-239, atomic number 94, in 1944 by American chemists Glenn T. Seaborg, Ralph A. James, Liano Morgan, and Albert Giorso in a nuclear reactor. So again, here we have plutonium plus neutrons in nuclear reactors or nuclear weapon tests becomes americium element number 95 through the decay of neutrons into protons eventually they turn into element number 95 it was the fourth transuranium element to be discovered curium atomic number 96 was discovered a few months previously here you have some information on curium again curium is radioactive it's used in spectrometers and space batteries and here we have americium. It's used in smoke detectors, also space batteries, and it was announced on a children's radio show by Glenn T. Seaborg. The element was named after the United States of America. It's not the first element to be named after a location. We have ruthenium, named after Russia, element number 44. We have francium, element number 87, named after France. Americium, element number 95, named after America. Polonium, element number 84, named after Poland. Germanium, element number 32, named after Germany, and Nihonium, element number 113, named after Japan. And again, americium-241 was artificially produced from plutonium-239. Plutonium-239 is an isotope of plutonium. Plutonium-239 is the primary fissile isotope used for the production of nuclear weapons, although uranium-235 is also used for that purpose, according to Wikipedia. It has 94 protons, its number of neutrons are 145, its symbol is 239PU, its decay products are 235U, its parent isotopes are CM, curium-243, americium-239, which is the element that we're talking about, and neptunium-239. Its half-life is 24,110 years. So a quick review. The element americium was in fact discovered after curium, the element which follows it in the periodic table. However, it did once exist on Earth, having been produced for millions of years in natural nuclear reactors in Oglogabon. These ceased to function a billion years ago, and as the longest-lived isotope is americium-247, with a half-life of 7,370 years, none has survived to the present day. Americium was first made late in 1944 at the University of Chicago by a team which included Glenn Seaborg, Ralph James, Leon Morgan, and Albert Giorso. The americium was produced by bombarding plutonium with neutrons in a nuclear reactor. This produced isotope americium-241, which has a half-life of 432 years. Here we have some more information on americium. Americium is a synthetic radioactive chemical element with the symbol AM and atomic number 95. It is a transuranic member of the actinite series in the periodic table located under the lanthanide element europium and thus by analogy was named after the Americas, according to Wikipedia. Again, its symbol is AM, its atomic number is 95, its atomic mass is 243U, its electron configuration is RN, 5F7, 7S2. It was discovered in 1944. If it was discovered before then, it was unable to be made until 1944. Its melting point is 2,149 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,176 degrees Celsius. Its discoverers were Glenn T. Seaborg, Albert Giorso, and Ralph A. James. Here we have some information on the gentleman who discovered americium. Let's continue with the element americium. Americium reacts with oxygen to form the dioxide AMO2 with halogen elements to form compounds such as the tetrafluoride AMF4 and all the trihalides and with hydrogen to form the hydride AMH2 plus X. Here we have americium fluoride. 
Americium fluoride is the inorganic compound with the formula AMF4. It is a tan solid. In terms of its structure, solid AMF4 features eight coordinate AM centers interconnected by doubly bridging fluoride ligands, according to Wikipedia. Again, its formula is AMF4, consisting of one atom of americium bound to four atoms of fluorine. Americium has four well-characterized oxidation states, from plus three to plus six in acidic aqueous solution with the following ionic species, AM3+, pink, AM4+, rose, which is very unstable, AMO2+, which is yellow, and AMO2, 2 plus, which is light tan, seen here. Here we have some information on americium dioxide. Americium dioxide is a black compound of americium. In the solid state, AMO2 adopts the fluorite CAF2 structure. If you're interested in learning about the elements fluorine and calcium, I'll leave a link in the description below. It is used as a source of alpha particles, according to Wikipedia. Its formula, again, is AMO2. Its molar mass is 275 grams per mole. Its density is 11.68 grams per centimeters cubed. Its melting point is 2,113 degrees Celsius, or 3,835 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2,386 Kelvin. Its crystal structure is fluorite cubic, seen here. Here we have americium 3 hydroxide. Americium 3 hydroxide is a radioactive inorganic compound with the chemical formula AMOH3. It consists of one americium atom and three hydroxide groups. It was first discovered in 1944, closely related to the Manhattan Project. However, these results were confidential and were only released to the public in 1945, according to Wikipedia. Its classification is an inorganic compound. In the common plus 3 state, americium is very similar to the other actinoid and lanthanoid elements. There is some evidence that the ion AM2 plus has been prepared in trace amounts. Its existence suggests that americium is similar to its lanthanoid homologue, europium, which can be reduced to its plus 2 oxidation state. There is also evidence for heptavalent americium in strongly basic aqueous solutions. So that was Americium Explained in X minutes or less and as a short amount of time as possible. Once again, if you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, thank you everyone for watching. Have a great one. Stay tuned for future videos and feel free to watch the previous videos that I made in the past. Once again, have a great one.